The Vans 240 electrical system comes from the car battery, the Vans battery. Now, on these Vans, they don't like you playing with the battery, so they've hidden it away <coughs> underneath the step of the passenger. You've got to unbolt it all. And there it is. A big meaty battery in its own compartment. Now you need access to that to be able to set up your charge system. Now it's got a smart alternator, which means it knows if you're playing around with it and it'll ignore you. You'll not get away with it. So, you see the sliding door is my battery box. Um, on the front there you'll see I've got a, a voltmeter um, just so I can keep a check on what the voltage is. Um, and cabinet lock just so that it, I know I can lose the key as well, just so that I can keep it locked when it's, when I'm moving around. Um, inside, battery and all its relevant bits. Now to see in there better, I will just push it out the way. And the wires have been made long enough so that I can slide it out to be able to do some work on the inside when I need. Now inside the battery box, we've got obviously first the battery, the auxiliary battery here. Um, then we've got the inverter, the 240 volt inverter. The CTEC DC to DC charger and a uh, auxiliary battery and um, sorry an auxiliary fuse box six-way fuse box and i put a tail block there for the negative side make it simple to connect up um, i've also put a cigarette lighter in here as well and down there we've got an amp meter to show me when i'm using if i want to check on it what ampage has been drawn at any particular time okay setting up the auxiliary charge system we start off at the vehicle battery first thing we need to do is put in a split charge relay that is this thing down here what this does is connects the two when the engine is running and disconnects it when the engine is stopped if you don't do that then obviously over time you can drain your vehicle battery now what we need for this is first you've got your main cable coming from the live of the battery going to the relay. From the relay going to your auxiliary battery. Then we have a switching wire to the relay, which you take from any point that you know comes live only when the ignition is on. The ideal item for that is usually a cigarette lighter. Check it, if it works, then use that. And then the relay itself needs a ground, so I've just connected that to the battery earth. You can connect it to the body if you want. There is no other wires then going back to the auxiliary battery. We use the negative body to use the earth, the ground, the, the neutral, whatever you want to call it. That will come from the chassis. Everything negative comes from the chassis. Then I've got uh, this protective cover on here just to protect that live cable from the rubbing of the case that's over the top of it um, the live cable here runs underneath the vehicle and through holes in the chassis i've sent the wire through the body under the van um, as you can see these are holes that was already in the van um, and so that we don't get any shaping which can cause some um, immense amounts of trouble if it shapes and shorts out against the body and um, I put this silicon around which is uh, again a CT1 that I use a lot of for bonding and such um, it hardens very strong um, so the wire is not going to move at all inside them holes now connecting up it's relatively simple from the van battery from the relay um, we have first this main cable coming through that you've just followed underneath the van. It goes straight into the CTEC um, and the relay. Uh, connecting it into the CTEC, because it's a smart alternator, we connect it into the port that's normally used for the solar panels. If it was a standard alternator, we'd connect it into this bottom one here that shows you an alternator on it. 
Then it comes out of the seat tank and that one there goes to the battery which is here. We then have a negative which comes from here, it can go to the chassis. In my case I put it straight to the battery. No problem with that. The battery then is connected to the body with this heavy duty earth block. That really is the charge side of it sorted. Then we've got the um, inverter. It's only a 600 watt this one, um, but it's more than enough for what I need it for. And that just connects straight to the battery, live and neg. The auxiliary fuse box is just connected straight to the positive, because it's only a positive. Just connects straight to the positive on the auxiliary battery. Um, and I've connected the cable from the negative to this tail block. And that basically is the charge system sorted out. Now if you keep a watch on the CTEC while I start the engine, you'll see uh, the responses there that you'll normally see when the thing is kicking off to let you know everything is working okay. See, I've got a little flicker on the top one here when you first turn the key. That's just to say I've turned the key on, um, but then it goes off until the engine's actually running, and that shows you then that there is power coming to it. This shows you which input you've got, whether it's bottom from alternator or top from uh, solar panel, and then it shows you it is getting through to the charge. And as it comes out of the inverter through a domestic plug top there, uh, travelling along, it goes up to a bank of plug sockets up there. Uh, six on there there is. And that then subsequently goes up to my bank of battery chargers. So at any point I can have my batteries charged up while I'm on the move. Now on the plug tops, you'll see I've marked each one of them to show what they're for uh, otherwise i'd get confused by them i've got the last one is empty and um, you can see the radio or whatever else is needed and as i said here i've just put a standard lighter socket there um, and if i need i can plug in um, an adapter to convert it to usb charger uh, just to give me extra usage Having the auxiliary fuse box here makes it very convenient for running other things that I need uh, like putting in the LED lighting circuit, there's one from here. Um, other things that you may want to, to do, you can run from here without affecting your main battery. So you can be running them all the time. It's just a useful additive. The main aim of it all was obviously for the 240 volt charging of me um, power tool batteries which is what I've accomplished so that's how I put in my 240 volt system for a vehicle that's got a smart alternator connecting up a DC DC charge system right thanks for watching if you've got any questions stick them in the bottom I'll get back to you otherwise bye for now